we had a number of things that came out. We are already, one of the, one of the first things that happened was is that everybody agreed that we're effectively already in an internet island scenario to some meaningful extent. Much more than people think, and that every island claims to be legitimate, which is interesting. We think about it from a distance, but every island has a good rationale for its need to be. We clearly want to avoid a tipping point where we go from having some islands to creating an archipelago, where we're all islands, effectively, and we're all disconnected. We identified four basic kinds of islands. The totalitarian island, based on information and citizen control. A liberal island, which might be, on the one hand, trade protectionism, and on the other hand, couched in terms of citizen protection. A corporate island, the idea of keeping your consumers in and getting a higher share of wallet amongst the people who are within your safe zone. And a cultural island, the idea of keeping my, my internet alive, in whatever language that is, assuming that it's not English. We t we, it was in an interesting point that came up was that there is, in fact, a fair amount of trust on the web, and that there's a lot of trust in the private sector on the web, much more so than for government. Even though we know, and we talked about this over in, in, our, in, our, in our prep con con conversations, that while there's trust for corporations, we also know in our heart of hearts that a lot of corporates have to share information with government. Um, one of the key points that came up, and it, it was a big point of our conversation for about 20 minutes, was the whole role of NGOs. We saw this as critical and increasing, and that, the, that NGOs had a whole series of different roles that they were going to play. The traditional ones, like Bearing Witness, being the, the group that says, hey, this is, this, is, this is not true, and representing the underrepresented, but also, uh, um, Jeff from AT&T mentioned the idea of, of, of NGOs increasingly serving as a resource for firms and for governments, which I thought was a very interesting point. And last, uh, we all agreed that islands will almost certainly increase the digital divide. So our ideas for the future are our, 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 our suggestions and thoughts. Um, number one, these are clearly problems that cannot be solved by governments or corporations, corporations alone. And all will be well served to strengthen the role of civil society. Second of all, focusing on IGF, we want to keep IGF and other parts of the internet governance infrastructure open to all not government dominated, as there's been some discussion of. And related to that, one of our goals and one of the ways to make it and keep it relevant was to increase participation exponentially by expanding the frequency of events, especially the regional events, which have you know, become much more popular in recent, re in recent months. A another thought was to make the meetings more substantive, more focused on sharing best practices. And this is directly related to our idea of trying to avoid this tipping point with islands. We have models that are out there. New countries that are coming onto the web need to see those, need to see, how, needs to see what their options are so that we can avoid islandization. And lastly, the idea of keeping in internet governance institutions as much as possible as they are. IGF should stay a place for open dialogue, but not a policy or standard-making body.